and some vocal Like Cletus the Slackjawed Yokel All right, so we're back with more of day two. Let's get into the next witness and see what he's got to say for himself. All right, who is the next witness? Conte Carlson. You swear the testimony of your boss to Ms. Snyder. Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you that? I do. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Okay. Mr. Anderson, can you please state your first and last name for the record? Uh, Dante Carlson. And Dante, do you work? I do. What do you do? I am a cook. And how old are you? I am 21. How old are you on July 30, 2022? I was 20 years old. Another underage drinker. And this one was being supervised by his father. Bad choices. And on that day, were you tubing on the Apple River? Yes, I was. With your dad and some other people? Yes. Um, were you consuming alcohol? Yes, I was. Do you know how much you had? Um, a Budweiser, a White Claw. I think I had just opened a Truly when this all started. And um, at some point, did something catch your attention as you were tubing down the river? Uh, yes, we heard screams for help. What happened next? Um, my dad told us to post up and then wait, and then he told us to go over and see what was going on. Did he say to try to de-escalate? No, he didn't say de-escalate. He just asked us to figure out what was going on. And did you go over there? Yes. And could you hear the... Teenagers yelling? Yes. Do you remember what they were yelling? Um, at first it was help, then it was cheering, and then they were calling him names. Did you try to ask Nikolai what was going on? Yes. Did he answer you? No. Were you telling him to leave also? Yes. Did it change from verbal to physical? Yes. And can you describe what you remember about, like, what you were doing, what you saw? Um, I had asked Nikolai Mew what was going on, what's going on. He didn't answer me, so I turned to the kids' group, and I went, what's going on? And they shouted, he's looking for little girls. And I'm like, he's looking for little girls? Confused. And then... I went again to turn back and get his side of the story, and that's when he punched Madison in the face. What do you remember next after that? I punched him. So did you punch him in response to him hitting Madison? Yes. And so we're on 2553. Did you ever see Nikolai with a knife in his hand? No. Obviously, at the time, you didn't know Nikolai or the teenagers? No. I'm scrolling to the right. So is that you? Yes. In 2557? Yes. So you're standing right to the right of... Madison and Riley. So 2661, is that where you're hitting him in response? Yes. Who's that in the yellow shorts on just on the right? Uh, that would be A.J. Martin. And then the last, he was on the camera, he was walking over? Yes. You didn't notice the knife? No. There either? Okay, I'm going to just show you three frames here. Two, seven, four, four, two, seven, four, five, two, I guess four frames. Seven, four, six, two, seven, four, seven. Does that look like you're hitting him again there? Uh, could be. 
How many times do you remember hitting him? Um, I remember punching him, and then I believe I may have smacked him twice. You're off, you'd be off to the right of the screen here? Yes. That's good. And at 2828, who's that? That would be my brother, Tony. Who's that in the back on the top left? Um, oh, that's Riley. Have you seen this video? Yes. Uh, can you hear Tony yelling anything at, at this point in the video? Um, yes. I'll ask it a different way. I'll withdraw the question. I'll, I'll... If you recall, is Tony yelling anything at you at this part? Uh, yes. What was I that? believe he was yelling at us to stop. So he's facing you at this point in the video? Yes, I believe so. After you saw Nikolai strike Maddie, did you yell something about it? Yes. Do you remember what you yelled? You never hit a woman. Have either of these guys had their testicles dropped yet? Like, have they hit puberty? Because their voices are so high-pitched. I keep thinking I'm listening to Ben Shapiro question Tim Pool or something. Do you hear you saying that in that portion of the video? I do. Riley clutching your side, do you see that? Yes. Did you, do, you, do you remember if you saw that at the time or not? I do not remember. But it was after, when she's seen with an injury on the video, it was after you yelled. You know, I hit a button. Did you um, do an interview with law enforcement? Yes. At, well, actually, let me back up. So, at some point, are you stabbed? Yes. And what... What do you remember of, actually just, what do you remember in your mind, not from the video, about what happened after, um, well, I guess first let me ask, do you remember Tony telling you to back up or get back? I remember him pushing me away from the commotion. Okay. And what do you remember after that? Um, I was pushed away and then I heard screaming going on behind me so I had turned around and then I was looking at Nick and he was standing maybe six feet in front of me. He just walked towards me and stabbed me. And what do you recall happening after that? Uh, I went to my dad. Did you see what Nikolai did after that? No. Do you have a memory of the sequence of when people were stabbed? Um, at first I thought it was Riley, uh, me, Isaac, AJ, and then my brother, but as the video has shown, that wasn't the order. So when you, when you were interviewed by law enforcement when you're trying to remember and tell them what happened? I yes. believe that's the order I had used. I can't exactly say I was. Were you in the hospital when you were interviewed? Yeah. It was the same day of the stabbings? I think I was at the hospital for maybe two minutes before I was interviewed. So after the scene, were you, how'd you get to the hospital? Were you rushed away in an ambulance? Uh, I remember leaning up against the cop car and then coming to, I was in an ambulance. And then the next thing I know is on the highway being put into, I think, a helicopter. And sometime shortly after you got to the hospitals when you were interviewed? Yeah. And did you tell law enforcement that you saw 
Thought it was Riley who got hit by Nikolai. I could have. You don't remember your what you said in your interview? Not by heart. Where were you stabbed? Um, uh, in my lower abdomen, I guess. My lower chest area. Can you stand up and just point? Um, right here. I mean, I can show you if you want. Are you comfortable showing your, you do have a scar? Yeah. It shows the exact spot? Yeah. Is that, looks like a little bit off to the center, to the left, right below your rib cage? Right below my rib cage, yeah. Can the jury see? Permission to approach? Yes. yes. Can you identify what that is? That is my uh, stab wound, I think two days after I got home okay. from the hospital. You've, you've seen the video, is that right? Yes. Um, do you see yourself get stabbed in the video? No. Dante, if, you're, if your medical records say that your BAC was a .119, does that seem probably about in the ballpark? Yeah. Okay. How tall are you and what do you weigh? Uh, six foot and 185. Did you know if Nikolai was alone or in a group? Mm, I didn't know. Did he ever say he had a group upstream that you heard? No. Did you ever hear anyone threaten Nikolai before you saw the strike on Maddie? No. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Your testimony was that you had two beers prior to walking over there with the Truly in your hand? Yeah. And I would imagine you didn't consume really any of the Truly then, correct? Correct. So your testimony to the jury is the extent of the alcohol that you drank that day was two beers, correct? Um, but I was asked, yes. Well, I'm asking you now under oath, is that truthful testimony? Uh, I had two beers, yes. Okay. Um, in the medical evidence, the medical chemical evidence is that your blood alcohol level was 0.119, correct? Yes. Do you understand that it would take a lot more than two beers to get to a 0.119 blood alcohol concentration? I would. Do you have any explanation how you can reconcile your oath, your under oath testimony that you only had two beers and the medical evidence that your blood alcohol concentration was 0.119? Yes, I had some hard liquor as well. Okay, so when you were asked questions about how much you had to drink, you chose to only say... I was asked how many beers I had. Okay. Um, okay, and so unless somebody asks you specifically an exact question, you're not going to just volunteer information that's hurtful to you, correct? Mm, no, I was not asked the question, so I didn't answer. I figured he was going to ask it next, but... You know, and uh, it's been 21 months now? Yeah. And over those 21 months, you spoke with law enforcement numerous times? Yes. You spoke with the district attorney's office numerous times? Yes. You spoke with victim witness people numerous times? Yes. And you were just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Objection. Sustained. Were you just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Same. Sustained. You made your point. The photo, have you seen the photo of the uh, 10 of you guys on the river that day? Yes. And in that photo, you're drinking a beer, correct? Uh, I don't know. Um, the hard liquor that you were uh, drinking, what was that consumed in? A um, it was off on a riverbed uh, shortly before we got to where the incident happened. There were shots of butterscotch schnapps out of uh, skis. Okay. And so you would consume those prior to... Just prior to this, right? Yeah. You see here that there's a, a position here that says hideaway bar. You see that? Yes. And then we see this here as incident location, correct? Yep. Um, and from the start until you got off the river, you had two beers, correct? 
Yes. And then you had hard alcohol as well, correct? Yes. All of that hard alcohol you say was consumed at the hideaway bar? I don't know if it was the hideaway bar. It was a point where people could camp and they offered us shots as we were riding down. Okay. Do you know of any other place on the river where you can buy shots at a bar other than there? Uh, it was a campsite. Okay. And so who offered you these shots? I don't know. Okay. The stranger offered you those shots? Yes. How many shots was it? Ten? No, like two. Two shots? Yes. So your testimony is that you had four alcoholic drinks that day, correct? Yes. Do you think four alcoholic drinks for a man who's six foot tall, 185 pounds, over the course of numerous hours would get your blood alcohol level to 0.119? I'm not a scientist. Okay. What was the objection? Foundation. Yeah, it's foundation that calculated on BAC. Sustained. Did you think you were intoxicated? No. Um, the alcohol test that you took at the hospital, that was hours after the incident, correct? I do not know when it was administered. Did you have any alcohol after the incident? No. Do you know if your alcohol rate goes up or down after you've consumed alcohol? Uh, I would assume it would go up. Okay. All right. I want to ask you some things about what your uh, dad told you, okay? Sure. You said, uh, well, first off, did your ta dad tell you, um, did you hear him say, go over there and make sure they don't attack that guy? No. Your dad didn't say that? Not that I had heard. Okay. If he told the jury that, would he be lying? Objection, Judge. Sustained. We approach, Judge? Yes. I'll move on, Judge. Thank you. What you heard your dad say was, go over there to try to figure out what's going on, correct? Yeah. That's what you understood your task was, correct? Yeah. And because at the time when you were over at the tubes, you didn't know what was going on, correct? Correct. And the best way to figure out what's going on is to ask questions and gather information, correct? Correct. And once you gather in that information, then you can make more decisions, correct? Yes. And I think you told the police that you went over there because you were acting as a good Samaritan. Is that right? Yes. So you recall, um, what did you observe before you walked over there? Um, him hanging around her tubes, grabbing onto the tubes, them screaming for help. Okay. Um, you've watched the video? Yes. You've listened to the video? Yes. Fair to say that there's no time on the recording in which it can be heard that those six teenagers are screaming for help. Agreed? On the video, yeah. Okay. So it's your testimony that sometime prior to that video, they were screaming for help. Yes. Do you aware, were you shown the video that happened two seconds before that in which the teenagers are yelling at Nikolai Mew and calling him a raper? Uh, yes. Were you shown that video? Yeah, I believe I was. Okay. And on that video, did you hear them screaming for help? No. So it's your testimony that prior to them calling this grown man a raper, they were screaming for help on the river? Yes. And after they'd scream for help, they decided they're going to call him back from when he's walking away and call him a raper. That's your understanding? Yes. Okay. And did you see Nikolai Mew walking away upstream from them and hear them call him a raper? I didn't hear them call him a raper. Did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from them upstream? Uh, towards the bridge or away from the bridge? Or are they going with the current, against the current? Sure. What do you so, mean by upstream? I, give me a second. So over to your right there is a diagram we drew with your dad, which has been marked as exhibit number 102. Do you see that? Yes. And you see on the top of that it says downstream? Yeah. And the bottom it says upstream? Yep. Uh, I believe downstream would also be the position of the bridge. Uh, 3564 bridge. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And as your dad described it, G2 would be yeah. your group, group two. Make sense? Yeah. And then the six black circles, just for our conversation, would be the teenagers. Does that make sense? Yes. Did you see just before, or at some time, did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from those tubes upstream 
away from the boys? No. You didn't see that? No, I saw him walking downstream. Okay. And what you're, you heard when he was walking downstream, is that when you say the boys were screaming for help? Yes. So was this sometime prior to the video in your memory? Uh, it could have been right before they started recording. Okay. Because I, um, I just want to make sure we're established. You agree that they don't scream for help anywhere on that three minute and 23 second recording. Agreed? Agreed as far as I've seen. Yes. And you agree that in the video just before that, which was started 11 seconds before, lasted nine seconds, in which they call him raper, they don't scream for help in that video, correct? Correct. And you would agree that when you watched that video, he was walking away from them upstream, correct? Yeah. So what I understand your testimony to be is sometime prior to these two videos, they had screamed for help. That's what you're saying? Yes. And then, or in between then, you know, that one video and that three second interval, they could have screamed for help there too. Okay. So you think that they maybe paused or stopped the recording in order to scream for help and then they started recording it then and just didn't say help at all? Could have. Could have, sure. All right. But the other scenario is that you heard this scream for help prior to the raper video, right? Could have. And if that was the case, you would agree that in the raper video where they're calling him raper, he's walking away from them upstream, correct? It would look like that. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're going over there in order to gather information, right? Yes. And uh, leading the charge from your group is Madison Cohen. Agreed? Agreed. And when Madison Cohen goes over to that group, you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison Cohen. Agreed? Sure. Yes? Yeah. And uh, as he does that, the teenagers' tubes are free to go downstream. Agreed? Agreed. Yes? But yes. When uh, you see Nikolai Mew walk away from the teenagers, clearing a path for them downstream, what do you see the teenagers doing? Uh, I wasn't paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay. Did you gesture to the teenagers to float down river? We've got this guy now. Like I said, I wasn't paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay. Did you encourage the teenagers to leave at that point? No. Why not? I, I was just there to figure out what was going on. Okay. And so when you got there to try to figure out what's going on, did you hear Madison Cohen immediately say to Nikolai Mew, go, get your fucking ass, go, something along those lines? Yes. Fair to say Madison Cohen wasn't asking questions. Agreed? Agreed. Fair to say Madison Cohen was giving orders, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. And she gave it in a loud, strong voice, correct? Yes. And when Madison Cohen was occupying Mr. Mew, telling him what to do, what were the teenagers doing? I do not know. Did you in any way gesture to the teenagers to continue on downriver? Once again, I was not paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nick. Okay, but weren't these the group of people that you said you were going there to help? Yes. Weren't you concerned about their well-being? Yes. And so you didn't pay attention at all to the group that you went over there to help? Objection argumented at last and answered twice. Did you, I'll rephrase, Thank did you. you pay attention at all to this group of people that yes. you would, okay. So. I did pay attention to the kids. I did not tell them to leave. I did not tell them to stay. Okay. So what were they doing when you and Madison were Standing by their tubes. Well, okay. I'm going to call a timeout here um, because everything is being written down by the court reporter. We have to have a question completed before you start your answer. And please let the witness finish his answer before you start the next question. There's a lot of overlapping talk. Dante, I get a little into a rhythm and I might have cut you off, so I apologize. Same here. We'll both. All right. I, I want to talk about other things that you may have observed in that interaction there initially with Mr. Co uh, with Mr. Mew, okay? Okay. Um, did you see, uh, you said you're looking for an explanation. When Mr. Mew walked over to you in Madison, did you see Mr. Mew gesture to that other group? Uh, not like that, but I did see him like turn around and point at them, but he didn't say anything. All he did was sit and point. 
Okay. There was a time, um, is it, you watched the video, right? Yes. And at about one minute and seven seconds into the video, you say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And fair to say that the reason you would say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew is Mr. Mew is giving you some sort of explanation, correct? No, he was pointing at the kids. Okay. And I said it doesn't matter, they're just kids. All right. So your purpose was to go over there to get information. Yes. And he gave you information in a nonverbal manner, right? We can call it that. What else would we call it? A gesture. Okay. Um, and when he gave you that information with the gesture, did you listen or did you tell him it doesn't matter? I told him it doesn't matter. Okay. So when you initially said you were going over there to gather information, maybe that's not really what you were doing? Maybe not from him, but from the kids. Okay. So you weren't really interested in his side of it? Not really. Okay. Um, and is part of that because they had called him names? No, it's because they asked for help. I went to go see what the people screaming for help were wanting. Okay. And if you perhaps misheard that and they weren't actually calling for help, maybe that's uh, how this got off on the wrong foot? Maybe, but I'm pretty sure they were screaming help. Okay. Well, I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. His testimony goes against logic just like his dad's. You said you heard them cheer, is that right? Yeah. And was the cheering in response to you and Madison walking over? Yes. Would you agree that a group of six teenagers cheering doesn't sound like a group that needs help? No, it sounds like a group that got what they wanted. Okay. Some people to come over and help them. Okay. When you heard them cheering, um, did you hear them laughing? No. Did you hear them giggling? No. Did you hear them cackling? No. Did you hear them use the expression, for the culture, for the culture, repeatedly? I did not. I just heard, woo. And okay. That was and pretty much all I heard from them. And when you heard the, the term woo, you took that as the cheering, correct? Yes. Certainly doesn't sound woo and asking for help are very different things, right? Yeah. Um, at some point, um, did you observe uh, Mr. Mew turn his back on you and Madison? To face the kids again, yes. Did you see him turn his back on basically you and the kids and look downstream? No. You never saw that? Not that I can recall. Fair to say you saw him walk over to you and Madison and the path downstream was clear for quite some time, correct? Yes. During that, would you agree that it's probably clear for upwards of 60 seconds? Yeah. During that 60 seconds, did you ever take the time to tell the teenagers who were cheering that they could just leave and go down the river? No. Did you ever gesture to them to say, move along? Jackson asked an answer like 10 minutes ago, I think. I think this is the 60 second entire time, Judge. Let's, and once I do, then it's... Look, wrap it up soon. Uh, I do not. Wait, wait for us. He's going to ask a question. My bad. You can go. I do not remember gesturing to them. Okay. Why not? I wasn't focused on them at that time. Even though they were the ones calling for help? Yes. You were focused on the man that they were calling a pedophile? Yes. Um, and I imagine when you heard that, that made, I think as you told the police, that made you mad, right? No, I was confused. Okay. Uh, and when you were confused, did you stop and gather more information? I tried to. Okay, what did you do? I asked, what do you mean by that? Because they said that he was looking after little girls. I went, he's looking after little girls? What do you mean? And did they respond? No, they did not. Did you hear uh, the group say uh, in response to your question, yeah, he's looking for little girls. We got it on tape, something along those lines? I, that sounds like their answer, yeah. And when you heard that, did you believe that to be true? I didn't know what to believe. Were you upset at Mr. Mew? No. Um, did you hear them call him a pedophile? No, I did not hear it. <laughs> at least not that I remember. Fair to say you're not a fan of pedophiles. 
I mean, who is? Pedophiles. Agreed. And if you did understand him to be a pedophile, you would think less of him in that position, correct? Understandably, yes. Yeah. You would think he's got less right to be in the space that he's occupying, correct? Especially with children, yes. And you didn't, there were no little girls around, were there? No. And the children that you referred to, it's like this group of 17 year olds, correct? Yes. Group of 17 year old football players who are pretty fit and tall, agreed? I wasn't looking at their statures or builds. I, they looked like children to me, so okay. I had assumed they were children. Okay. And by children, you mean is 17-year-old somebody that's a children? I would say between at least under 18, but they looked 13 to 17 to me. Okay, that's what your position was? Yes. Now, you made some statements to the police, correct? Yes. You made some statements about the observations that you made on that day on the river, right? Yes. And the statements that you made to the police were that same day in the hospital, agreed? Agreed. And they were statements that you made about your friends that you were there on the river with, correct? Yes. You were on the river with Riley Madison, correct? Yes. She's a friend of yours from high school? Middle school. So you've known Riley Madison for years and years, correct? Yes. And you were on the river with Madison Cohen, correct? Yes. Same thing, a friend that you'd known since middle school, correct? Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. So somebody that, you know, and Madison's clearly got blonde hair, right? Yeah. And Riley's clearly got a, a brunette or a different color hair than blonde, right? Very different? Yeah. Their body shapes are different. Yeah. Their personalities are different. Yeah. You can distinguish between the two of them, right? Sometimes. What is up with this kid? Um, and what you told the police on Madison, I'm sorry, on July 30th, they were asking you about what happened. Is that right? Yes. Um, and you told them, I thought he had hit my friend Riley and I automatically reacted. That's what you told them? Yes. You used the name Riley, correct? Yes. Then you also said to them, me and Riley were standing right next to each other and he like got up close to Riley and Riley pushed him away and he did a swift motion towards her, correct? Yes. And the her you're referring to that sentence is the only name that you used, which was Riley, correct? Yes. When asked again about it, you told the police, I don't know if Riley pushed him or something. I didn't see that. All I saw was him make a motion towards her and I saw her fall down. So I reacted and hit him. You said those words? Yes. And the name that you used in that situation was Riley? Yes. And the description that you gave in that situation is you saw him, Mr. Mew, make a motion, correct? Yes. And that uh, as a result of that motion, you said you saw Riley fall down, correct? Yes. And then in response to that, the officer asked you, can you describe Riley to me? Do you remember that? Yes. And you said she is a brunette, skinny, has tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. And that, fair to say, accurately describes Riley Madison, correct? Yes. Madison Cohen is not a brunette, correct? Correct. You wouldn't use, again, I apologize to... You wouldn't necessarily use the same description of Madison's body as you use when describing Riley, correct? Correct. And uh, you also said the person had tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. That accurately describes Riley, not Madison, correct? Yes. That's what you told the police on that day, correct? Yes. And then lastly, you told them later again that same interview, I think it was Riley who like went like that, but I'm not 100% sure. And then all I saw was the swift motion. Riley fell to the ground. I hit him. He fell. That's what you said, correct? Yes. So again, the fourth time you described it as something happening to Riley, correct? Correct. And in each of those four times, you never used the word punch. Agreed? Agreed. Each of those times you used the words of uh, swift 
motion, correct? Yes. That's what you described that you saw on that day about this, correct? Yes. Now today, 21 months later, you're saying something different, agreed? Agreed. Now today you're saying, it's not that you saw Riley, uh, not that you saw a swift motion go to Riley, but that you saw Madison get punched. That's your testimony today, correct? Yes. In those 21 months from the first story to the new story, you've talked to Madison Cohen? Not really, but yes. You've talked to Riley Madison? A little, yes. You've talked to others in the group? My family, yes. You've talked to the district attorney's office? Yes. And since you've talked to all those people, you now have a new story, correct? I have a better recollection of what had happened, if that's what you're asking, yes. Okay, so the fact that you were at a point one nine on that day, you now have a better recollection today than you did on that day. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, they also questioned me when I was on pain pills from the hospital. Okay, I thought your testimony was that they came there and saw you within two minutes of your arriving. Yes. Okay, and so in those two minutes you'd consume those pain pills and it's your position? Whatever they gave me on that helicopter. Okay. Um, you had said, uh, going back to your statement to the police, I just want to dial in on one of the things. The last time you spoke, you said, I think it was Riley who went like that, but I'm not 100% sure. I want to ask you about that sentence, okay? Okay. There's a video of you give, making that verbal statement. Do you understand that? Yes. And in that video, it shows you move your hand kind of like this. Is that right? Yes. And you had both of your hands up in a um, manner in which someone would push out towards another person, correct? Or push away from. Sure. They, they were extending their hands, which were close to their body, to push outward towards what's ever in front of them, correct? Yes. That's what you demonstrated when you said, I think Riley went like that. Yes. Can you just show us that demonstration now? I Okay. And you were able to show us that demonstration because that's what you remember as you sit here today, Riley did that, correct? Yes. And in response to Riley doing that, that's when you saw the swift motion? No. I remember it differently now, but... After talking to other people, you remember it differently. But the thing you... After thinking about it for the last 21 months and seeing it every night, yeah. But what you absolutely know, because you said it then and you say it now, is you remember just before Nikolai Mew getting punched by you, you saw Riley Madison push her hands out towards him, correct? Yes. That's for sure, correct? Yes. Had you seen um, Riley Madison get up in Mr. Mew's face? No. Had you seen Madison Cohen get up in Mr. Mew's face? N not up in the face, but she was talking to him face to face, yes. She would be, I've heard uh, others say it's in his personal space. Would you agree with that? In his bubble, yeah. She's right there in his bubble, correct? Um, like, not in his face, face, but like talking to him like a normal distance would be. Okay. Um, but you use the term in his face. You'd agree with that? Sure. Okay. I want to ask you about what you did to Nikolai Mew, okay? Okay. Um, you um, said you saw a swift motion and you reacted and punched him, correct? Yes. You laid him out, correct? I guess. Well, those are the words that you used when the police asked you to describe what you did to him. You said, I laid him out, correct? Yes. Fair to say that when you used the term, I laid it out, laid him out, you said it with a sense of pride. I guess. I mean, I mean you were proud of laying this man out in response to what you observed regarding the swift motion, correct? No, I was proud of defending a woman. Okay, and so I wanna get into that, right? And so what you understand is you're defending a woman, correct? Yes. Which woman? Madison. Okay, 
And the woman that you say you're defending, she fell to the ground. I believed at the time she did, yeah. Okay. And you believed that because that was your memory? Yes. And you say that now, I believed it at the time because you know that the video shows she didn't fall down, correct? Correct. So what we know is your memory is wrong, at least in regards to that, correct? Yes. So there's times that your memory is wrong about what happened that day, correct? I guess, yes. There could be many explanations for why it's wrong, correct? Yes. Just human memory is not perfect, agreed? Agreed. It might be wrong because you were intoxicated. A little. 0.119, right? Yeah. You're over the legal limit, correct? Yeah. You would agree that that might have impacted your ability to accurately perceive things? Uh, I guess, yes. Might have, uh, that might have impacted your ability to accurately recall things? I guess, yes. Another thing that might have affected your memory is perhaps the, the stress and the trauma of everything that happened afterwards, correct? Yes. Um, another thing is, is that you could just be intentionally telling an untruth. That's possible too, correct? No. That's not possible? No. Okay. Your testimony today is you saw Madison Cohen get punched and just put us all in that same space. Yes. Describe this punch. Uh, it came from his left side. I would say it was a pretty fast, swift motion like that. Okay, so are you right now going on a memory that you have in your head of what you remember yes. seeing? And what you've just shown us is you used your left arm to move forward in what I would describe a jabbing motion. Would that be fair? I used my right arm. You used your right arm, okay. Did you see Nikolai Mew use his right hand? Yes. And so your testimony to the jury is Nikolai Mew punched Madison Cohn with his right hand. Yes. And you, can you, uh, just want, trying to use words, the best thing is to, I've heard it described as a hook. I saw you do something different. Can you just show us again what it is you saw? It was like, it started from his side and it went out like that. Okay. Um, kind of straightforward, so his hands in front of him, down at his side? Uh, down at his side, and then it, like, I guess you could say it was like a hook, but it wasn't, it was okay. like a jab. It came down and it went up, agreed? Agreed. And it came from his body position outwards towards the other person, correct? Correct. And it seems like, is my arms kind of in my body plane? You see that? Yes. It stays essentially within the body plane is what you're saying. No, it was kind of off to the right. It went like this. Kind of. It was, it, as it went up, it curved to the right. Okay. So again, trying to use words I don't to know the correct words to use to describe it. We'll sort through it. Um, seems like you're saying basically not a full hook, not a full jab, something in between. Yes. Okay. But it's clearly with his right hand, correct? Yes. Um, are you aware that prior to that, would you say happened at about 150 in the video? Is that about right? Do you remember watching the video and it's around the 150 mark? Uh, sure. Sound about right? Yeah. And do you know that in the video you can observe Mr. Mew standing in front of uh, Riley and Madison with the knife in his right hand? Yes. So it's with the hand that's holding the knife that he punches her? Yes. And where does this punch that you say he hits her with, with the hand with the knife, where does that land on her? Uh, the left side of her face. Okay, on the left side of her face? Yes. Okay. And okay, look to be a forceful punch. Yes, more than just like a little tap. Yes, uh, like a full-grown man punching a woman square in the face. Correct. Yes, and it must have punched her. I think you indicated up like on her eye level. Is that right? I would say so. Yes, yeah. like and so it would have been near her left eye. 
on her cheekbone is, I guess, would probably be the best place to put it. Uh, around this area. Okay. Around, and when you just said around this area, it was you, your hand, I think, went I'm a sorry. Little... Like the cheekbone. Sure. Yeah. Um, just under where your glasses protect your face, correct? Correct. You have on a pair of, would you agree, rather small eyeglasses, correct? Yes. And on that day, Madison Cohen had some oversized sunglasses on, correct? Yes. And so the area that you're pointing to on her face would have been covered by those oversized sunglasses, correct? I wouldn't say covered, but... Sure. Sure. So this grown man holding a knife as a hand reaches out and punches her in the eye where her eye, her sunglasses are, correct? Her cheekbone, but yeah. Okay. Right near her sunglasses, correct? Yes. Um, you're aware that her sunglasses are in perfect condition? Objection. The same facts that that was sustained. I'm asking if he's aware of that. Well, I think that's no. established. Okay. Sustained. Uh, do you know the condition of her eyeglasses? No. Um, would you expect a woman standing in front of a man with oversized eyeglasses that got punched in the manner that you did, would you expect her glasses to be bent, broken, disturbed in some manner? Objection, speculation. Sustained. The, uh, when you're standing there and you see this, you must have been ready to respond right away. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you said you hit him immediately, correct? Yes. So there wasn't any time for you to type of assess anything. You just hit him right away, correct? After I saw him punch her, yes. Oh. So you saw it and had to have your body like process what happened, and then you moved into action, correct? Yes. So it wasn't as if you saw it happening and at the same time you started swinging, correct? Uh, can you? You weren't violent until you saw this, correct? Correct. And when you saw this violence, it must have surprised you. Yes. It must have shocked you. Yes. It must have taken you a moment to assess what are you going to do, correct? No. You just, after that, after you made that observation, you then moved your body, correct? Yes. Would you agree that you were moving that body from making that observation would have taken you a second or two? Sure. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, you agree that uh, when you saw this, well, let me say this. So why, you punched him, you said, in defense of her. Is that what you said? Yes. What were you feeling at that time? Uh, anger, I guess. Okay. And the anger was at Nikolai Mew, correct? Yes. You've, fair to say, never described to anybody, even today, that your feeling was of fear, correct? I would say, yeah. You agree. You've never described your feelings on that day as to why you punched him was you punched him out of fear. Correct. Because you weren't fearful. You were angry. Yes, he hit my friend. Sure. And so you hit him in response to hitting her because you were angry, correct? Yes. It wasn't because you believed her safety was in danger, right? You agree? I don't know. I reacted in case it was. Sure. And you reacted by hitting him, not tending to your friend, correct? Yes. After you hit him once, he fell in the water, correct? Yes. And as he fell in the water, you moved to get over him, correct? Yes. You moved to position yourself in a way that you could strike him a second time, correct? Yes. And you moved to position yourself to set yourself up for that second strike to be with your right hand, correct? Yes. That was your dominant hand, correct? Yes. You wanted to make sure the force that you hit upon him was the most dominant force you could use, and that would be with your right hand. I would say, I wouldn't say I did it uh, purposely. I just think my body naturally went to the right side. Okay. To set yourself up to hit him a second time, correct? Yes. Clearly, when he's down in the water on his back, Maddie's safe, right? Yes. She's not in any danger, agreed? You agree? For now, yeah. In that moment, she's not in any danger, agreed? Agreed. And you're not in any danger, agreed? He's uh, down on the ground, correct? Yes. You're not in any danger. 
You agree? Um, I would say, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, and you would agree that you and Maddie and the 11 other people there are not in danger when Nikolai Mew is down on the ground in the water after you hit him. Agreed? I wouldn't say agree to that. Okay. I, he was still a danger. Okay. He was a danger while he was on his back in the water surrounded by you and your friends. Yes. Okay. And because you believe, that's what you believed at that time? Yes. And you believe that because of the one time you saw him hit your friend, correct? Yes. So you, you observed one act and you thought he's still a danger even if he's down and in the water, correct? Yes. That's you were fearful at that time. Or were you still angry? I believe it was a little bit of both. Okay. So when you punched him the first time, it wasn't out of fear. You weren't afraid until he was down in the water. Yes. But when he's down in the water, you're fearful and angry, and then you hit him, correct? Yes. And you do that with your right hand so that you can make sure you hit him with enough force, correct? I wasn't making sure to hit him with enough force, but okay. my body just naturally positioned itself to the right side. Okay. And... After you hit him the second time, you saw your friend Anthony Martin come up behind Mr. Mew, right? No. You didn't see that? No. Are you aware that that happened? Yes. Now that you've watched the tape, you understand that Anthony Martin was coming up behind him, correct? Yes. I was also being pushed away at the same time, though. Who was being pushed away? I was. Okay. You were being pushed away at the same time, Ant let me just make sure. You're, while Anthony Martin is pushing... Nikolai Mew down from back. Yes. You're being pushed away by somebody else. I believe I was, yes. And that somebody else was your brother? Uh, no, I think that was a couple of seconds later, but yes. I'm just maybe Who pushed you away? I don't know. They pushed me from behind. Do you see, is that Nikolai Mew in the water? Yes. Do you see a shadow of an arm across Nikolai Mew's chest? Yes. Is that the shadow of your arm? Uh, I would believe so, yes. And then I'm going to move forward here. 20... And that's us. What the, the, Those slides up to 2707, that's your right hand hitting him across his chin, side of his face, ear, head. Agreed? Agreed. And then in response to that, Nick Mew goes, head goes back to touch the water again, correct? Yes. And then as we watch here on the video, Anthony Martin is coming up behind. Is that right? Yes. And we see two feet in front of Nikolai Mew. Is that correct? Yes. Those are your feet, correct? Yes. You're standing in front of him, correct? Yes. And you're at this time preparing to hit him for a third time, correct? I believe so. That's your hand or your uh, elbow forearm that we see in the upper left portion of that cr frame, correct? Yes. And then um, here, this is your right shin, your right leg, is that correct? Uh, that looks like the top of his head, but I would say it's... Let me go back a couple, maybe it's... Oh, yes, sorry. Does that appear to be your... Yeah. Agreed, nobody's standing behind you here, that we were aware of at least? Yes. And then you swing through, and we see through the middle there, your hand at 2747 hitting Nick Mew again in the front of his head somewhere, correct? Yes. And while you're hitting him in the front, A.J. Martin is pushing him down from behind, correct? Yes. That's the third time that you've hit him, correct? Yes. You're hitting him out of anger, agreed? Yes. You're not hitting him in defense of anybody there, right? False. I was. You were this. You believed that at that point, you feared for your safety. No, I feared for everyone else's safety. I no, I didn't fear. Okay, you're getting me confused. All right. Well, let's take a step back. Let's all ask it again. Okay. Tell me in this photo when you're hitting him the third time, whose safety do you fear for? My friends. Okay. Which friends in particular? Uh, Madison, AJ, Tony. Riley, Janelle, Scotty, my father, Sheena. Okay. So let's go through that list. Do you know where Madison is there? No. Do you know where Riley is there? No. 
Do you know where your uh, brother Tony is there? I believe he was walking up right behind AJ. Okay. Um, it, you know where AJ is, correct? Yes. AJ's behind Nikolai Mew, pushing him down from behind. Agreed? Great. But in that situation, you were worried for AJ's safety? Yes. Okay. And as a result of your fear for AJ's safety, that's why you hit Nick Mew a third time, correct? Yes. And you thought that amount of force was necessary? Yes. Do you think that's reasonable? I did. You did in that time? Yes. And you did in that time because of the escalated nature of everything that was going on there. Everybody was just fearful around there, correct? Yes. Now, let me ask you about that because you say you're in fear, but when you hit him the first time, you had a beer in your left hand, right? Yes. And when you hit him the second time, you still had the beer in your left hand, right? Yes. And when you hit him the third time, you still had a beer in your hand, correct? Yes. Have you heard the expression, hold my beer? Yes. And is that basically like, I'm going to go do something, you should hold this, I'm going to need two hands, correct? Yes. In this situation, you didn't even ask somebody to hold your beer, right? I didn't have time to. You were confident enough that you could do this while holding your beer? No, I wasn't confident in it at all. Okay. Um, so why did you keep the beer in your hand? I was just holding it. Okay. That's all right. Um, I want to ask you some questions about your confidence level as the time passed, right? Okay. Before he, as you say, made a swift motion towards a, a, a person which you now say is Madison, were you afraid? I wouldn't say it was fear, more as confusion. Okay. So up until that moment, you had no fear, correct? Correct. And I would imagine at some point, you knew what the numbers were, correct? You knew that there were six people in the original group, correct? I guess. And that you and Madison went over there originally, correct? Yes. So that makes eight, agreed? Agreed. And then Riley Madison joined, that makes nine. Yes? Yes. And then Gabby and Janelle were standing around there, correct? Yes. Makes 10 and 11, agreed? Yes. And then Anthony, your brother Anthony Carlson joined in, correct? Yes. That makes 12? Yes. And then AJ Martin joined in, that makes 13, correct? Yes. 13 against one, correct? Yes. Imagine you were feeling pretty confident then, correct? No. Didn't feel confident? No. Were you afraid? In a way, yes. Okay. And it's were to believe that in that situation. Objection, I give that That's fair. I'll okay. withdraw. Thank you. You said while this was going on, your brother was telling you to stop, correct? I believe so, yes. Did he tell you to stop before you hit him the second time? No. Did he tell you to stop before you hit him the third time? I don't think so. I didn't catch that. I said I don't think so. Okay. So your brother was telling you to stop though, correct? I think he was just talking to everyone in general. Okay. But at that point, when you heard him say stop, you had hit Mr. Mew two or three times, correct? Correct. And you had said your brother Tony came up and started to push you away, correct? Yes. So at the time that he's pushing you away, he's also yelling stop. Yes. Fair to say he's telling you to stop and he's pushing you away because you're giving a beat down to an old man? I couldn't say what he was doing. Okay. Or all what you, he was thinking. All you know is you heard stop and you heard him try to push you away, correct? Yes. Had your brother not told you to stop and pushed you away, would you have kept beating on him? No. You were just, all your anger had gone out? Yes. Okay. Took three hits to get all your anger out? I, I guess, yeah. Okay. I'll show you what's been marked as exhibit number 103. Um, this is a drawing somewhat similar to that. Does it at least over here make sense to you? 
Do you see the G1 and the yep. G2 in the different groups? Yeah. Do you see the red dots? Yes. Do you see the initials inside the red dots? Yes. Do you see the one blue dot? Yes. Then over on the left, you see a frame number and a time, correct? Yes. Would you agree at about 139 in the video and frame 2387 that that's a rough approximation of where the 13 people in Mr. Mew are on the river? I guess it would be a good estimation. You agree? Yeah. Showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 104, do you see the same kind of configuration? People are a little bit different, but the same general idea? Yes. And you see in the upper left hand corner, it's uh, frame 2592 at time 149. Yes. And same 13 red dots and one blue dot. Agreed? Yes. And agree again that this accurately represents the approximate position of the 13 people in Mr. Mew on the river? Approximately, yeah. Move for the admission of exhibit 103 and 104. Any objection? No objection, Judge. All right, they're both received then. And then showing exhibit 104. Those are the only questions I have, thank you. Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start out kind of on this subject here. Two, five, four, six. I think on cross, you talked about Riley having her hands up like that. Yes. Do you know if this is what you're talking about, if it was something else? If I you know. think it was when I had punched him. Okay. I'm going to scroll forward. So that's you, kind of like the drawing. Yep. And Riley and Madison are shoulder to shoulder, like the drawing defense showed. Okay, I'm gonna keep going forward. Now, in this frame, 2659, it's more like that. Agreed, where you're shoulder to shoulder with Riley facing Nikolai and Madison's behind. Uh, yeah, but I think those are opposite, the stance on that. What's that? So I think it's just like Riley and me were like crisscross. You're on the right of Riley in that still frame, right? Yeah. Okay, and in my drawing, DC is on the right, Riley RM is on the left, right? Well, if you're sitting this way, it's up. Oh, and you're kind of looking at it backwards oh. over your shoulder? Yeah. You want me to turn it a little bit? Oh, I see what you meant now. Kind of matches the... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was MU at the bottom. Oh, gotcha. So, and you, you were asked on cross if when Mew punched Madison, you told law enforcement, you said it was Riley then, that she fell back, fell down. Do you remember yeah. that? If she got hit, she, she testified she got knocked back like that. And if you're- Injection. Sustained. If you just saw the beginning of her going back, as you're, and then you respond, would you have seen what happened behind your back? No. Defense asks you on cross, essentially a line of questioning about helps not audible in the video. Do you recall that? You can't hear somebody saying help in the video. Yes. Defense gave you, there must be two options, and the defense asked you about one option being, they said help before the videos started. Do you recall that? Yes. And then they asked you, and then you said another possibility is it was in the seconds between the two videos. Do you recall that? Yes. Is another option that you just can't hear it in the video over other yelling? Maybe. Do you know which one it is? I do not. You just know you heard them yelling for help? Yes. And did you, 
tell the officer multiple times that you didn't see, that you're looking away and didn't see exactly what happened until you turned back and that's when you saw the strike yes and then defense asked you about alcohol so you would have been on your fifth drink as far as you remember how many drinks you had on the river yes do you know if a drink is 0.02 per drink 0.03 do you have any idea no when you so you, you testified on cross you were responding to when you hit Nikolai, you're responding to him hitting Madison. Remember that? Yes. And up until you up until you saw him hit Madison, was there any? Did you see any punching or pushing? Um, not really pushing, but like touching. Yeah. And. In response to the punch, you punched, is that right? Yes. And then two open hand slaps, strikes. Yes. Did you pull out a weapon? No. Knife, gun? No. Put him in a chokehold? No. Did you, he was down on the ground, did you kick him? No. Did people pile on top of him? No. So defense asked you about 13 on one, as far as you remember, and from everything you've seen in the video, was it 13 on one or you hitting him and AJ doing a push? So two. I, yeah, I would say that's fair. I didn't really see anyone hit him or try to go after him. Nothing else. Mr. Nelson? Do you agree that there were 13 people standing there in the position that we showed on exhibits 103 and 104, correct? Yes. You were one of those people, correct? Yes. You were ready, willing, and able to use violence, correct? Yes. And you did, correct? Yes. AJ did too, correct? I, I wouldn't categorize a push as violence, but... If you're pushing somebody down while their friend smacks them across the front on the face, would you think that's violent? Yes. Um, Fair to say that Madison Cohn was standing there in a position that may have been ready, willing, and able to be violent? I don't think so. She'd already pushed him and pulled him and screamed in his face, correct? Yes. She wasn't really gracious with him, was she? You wouldn't characterize that, would you? No. She's screaming in his face, correct? She's screaming at him, yes. And same with Riley Mattison. Same thing, correct? Ready, willing, and able? Objection on speculation. Of Sustained. Lines. Sustained. Did she appear to you to be in a position that she was ready, willing, based upon her gestures, and capable? Same objection. To cause wait, violence? Wait, nope, nope, sorry, there's an objection. Sorry. Sustained. You, I believe you said, and I, I, I want to give you a chance because I couldn't understand it on redirect. It's so beautiful. Did I understand it correctly? You said you were not in a position to say whether she fell or didn't fall. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Originally, you told the police she fell, correct? Yes. Why did you tell the police something that you knew was wrong? Because at the time, I had remembered it differently. Okay. So at that time, when you said that, you had a memory in your mind that she had fallen, correct? Yes. And since that time, your memory has changed, correct? Yes. And that's changed based upon conversations that you've had with friends? No. Based upon you're watching the video? No. Just on your own, your mind said it wasn't the way I originally saw it, correct? Yes. And it's just coincidental that your change is helpful to the state's case? No. You had said uh, that you, when you were asking about this help, right? Do you remember they were asking about you heard help, but it wasn't on the recording? Yes. So there was a time when you were over in that position where the circle is G2, correct? Yes. And then that's when you said you heard the, the teenagers yelling for help, correct? Yes. It was when you were over there by that position, correct? Yes. At that point, the phone would have been with Jawan Cockfield over here by G2, correct? Yes. 
So you would agree, had, let me ask this, all of the people in Jawan Cockfield's group were closer to the phone than you were, correct? Yes. So if any of those people, including Jawan Cockfield, had have yelled, help, that voice would have been closer to the phone to pick it up than it would have been to your human ear, which was farther away, correct? Yes. Could be that you're just wrong? No. You for sure heard it? Yes. Even though it's not on the recording, which was right by the boys? Yes. And you're as confident as that as you are in all of your other testimony? Yes. Even if we didn't see it on video, you're still confident that it was a punch? Yes. Nothing else. All right. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. You may step down. Is he released? No. All right. Uh, please see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll give you instructions. Well, I got to say, that's definitely the most entertaining testimony I've seen so far in this trial. And I guess we're to assume that when he said he's a cook, he must work as a cook in his dad's bar. I don't know. But his dad had mentioned that both of his sons worked for him in his bar and that sometimes they had to remove rowdy customers. So I suppose you could say they're like bouncers. But once again, just like his dad, he seemed very willing to say whatever in order to put Mew away. Much of his testimony went against logic. And I would say that he wasn't exactly honest with the police either. I also don't think he was very honest here in this testimony. And I gotta say that I find it very strange that he, that he has a hard time telling the difference between his two female friends the two female friends he's supposedly known since middle school, and he doesn't know the difference between the two, I would say he needs to stay away from the butterscotch schnapps. And I'm not going to continue harping on about this one. We only have one more witness left for day two, so I'm going to go get started on that. See you soon. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Um, I'm so fucking tired, man. <laughs>